Smalls. <laughs> Word. Don't get it twisted. Wall Street loves some biggie biggie. <laughs> baby, baby. It was all a dream. Birthdays were the worst days. Now we sip champagne when we're... I can't rap all night, right? I gotta give like an official speech or something. <laughs> I'm so glad that you all are here tonight. I'm honored and surprised um, when I uh, first found out. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that story. Um, <clears throat> but at first I wanna thank President Paula Edgar. Where did she go? Did she go back to her seat? She's quick. Um, thank you, President Paula Edgar. Thank you to the MBBA board and thank you to the MBBA staff for putting together a wonderful celebration tonight. We have a lot to celebrate. We have challenges that we seek to overcome time and time again, but it is imperative and important that we find these opportunities to celebrate us. If you all will indulge me, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Um, after I got the call from Paula, President Paula, um, inviting me to um, accept this prestigious honor, I was very honored, I was excited, told a couple friends, told my wife. I went home that night, I woke up the next morning, and I was a little more ambivalent. So I, I went to my desk, I composed an email, and I sent a note to four people, four of my board of director members, um, sharing my thoughts and asking for their counsel and their advice. Um, I actually have the email here, the printout from the email, and uh, I actually wanna read this to you all. I wanna read their responses. First <clears throat> was Jim Breedlove. He's a mentor and a friend. He's a, a fellow Davis Polk alumnus. He's a retired general counsel from Praxair, a Fortune 500 company. He currently sits on a public company board, and he, won, he received this award several years before me. He was going to be with us tonight, but um, something came up. Those of you that know Jim, not only is a smooth brother, not only is he one of the smartest brothers that you may ever meet, but he's quite analytical, and it was in his response. He said, Nate, it's commendable that you have a great sense of humility despite A, your significant professional accomplishments, B, the mentoring of younger black folk within and outside of Morgan Stanley, and C, the huge amount of work and dedication you devoted to bringing young brothers together to advance fellowship for the in the trenches experience sharing and for career enhancement. But, my take is that the extensive work you've done in the B and C areas alone qualify you for a Trailblazer Award. You know, I have to go back and read it like two or three times, make sure I understood all the points he was making. He said, remember that there's no hard and fast standard of how far one needs to be in their career to qualify for that award. Many past MBBA Trailblazer awardees, for example, may have been older than you or have advanced further in their careers but not made nearly the same impact on other young black folks' lives as you've made. So net, net, I see no reason why you should hesitate to graciously accept this distinguished award. It's well-deserved. Second, Carla Harris, Vice Chairman of Morgan Stanley, senior, senior client advisor, one of the baddest investment bankers on Wall Street. I've had the privilege of having her as a mentor and sponsor to me for a number of years. Also a very energizing woman. Her email response read as follows. First of all, congratulations, all caps, exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> Second, you should do it for all the reasons you cited and because you don't know who will be inspired, motivated, and will believe in themselves because they hear your story. Oftentimes, when we are nominated to these lists divinely, it is not about us at all, but for someone else. Lastly, you deserve it and you should accept that someone else has recognized it. Remember, somebody else didn't get the call. Third, <clears throat> one of the best executive search professionals, the newly minted Major Lindsay and Africa partner, Sonia Sohm. Sonia, where are you? Holla, holla so I can see you, over there. Sonia has become my personal coach. Um, personal and professional coach. She shares a lot of insights and helps me navigate my career. Um, do it. You deserve it. Remember, the more accolades you have, the more prestige and attention that you can bring to your efforts on behalf of the community, 
and for your own career, and to inspire others, including Sweet Baby Pie, which is my daughter. <laughs> Finally, my brother from another mother, the brother who gave me the succinct yet sage advice how to successfully transition to in-house practice. That is, not to be the BPU, the business prevention unit, and also the first black managing director in the history of Morgan Stanley's legal and compliance division, Dwayne Hughes. <laughs> Dwayne, please stand. My man. In his traditional style of being very uh, succinct and sage and dispositive, his response email said, you should accept, period, I will not discuss this further. <laughs> I wanted to share that experience with you all because that's my cohort. Those are the people that I've been privileged to have into my life who have made the decision that they're gonna take their hard-earned insights and experiences and share them with me. That they're gonna give me the privilege and the honor of learning from them so that I may do a little bit better. So when I think about the theme tonight, when we're talking about the legal diversity pipeline, I am the pipeline, right? It's an improbable journey that this young boy from Brooklyn, this first-generation American, the son of Haitian descendants, Haiti Sheri, Sak Passe, would be standing here before you with the successes that I have achieved. Indeed, it was hard work and sacrifice on my part. Our family has felt a toll, but this wouldn't happen without many of you. So, I'm going to briefly try to thank a number of people that have been deeply influential. I will not be able to thank you all because I may not have enough time before Paula drags me off the stage. Um, but I'm going to thank a few. Those of you that I do not thank, you know who you are, you know what you mean to me, so thank you. First and foremost, God. Because only God knows the journey that has been laid out for me, but every single day I am thankful for the step I take um, in his name. Amen. I want to thank my family, especially my wonderful mother who's here tonight. Mom, please stand. <laughs> Nicole St. Victor, the life lessons that I've gotten from this woman are innumerable, invaluable, and immeasurable. But it's really the precious, the precious love that you can only have from a mother that has driven me for so many years. And many times I ask my mom, how do I pay it back? How much does it cost? And every single time she has only one answer for me. What is it, mom? No charge. <laughs> Shirley Caesar. To my beautiful wife, Dr. Christina Altaviz Twyman St. Victor, please stand. She's not gonna stand. She's waving, but she's not gonna stand. But she's right here for me. She was foolish enough to say I do. I'm an opportunist, so I took it and ran with it. <laughs> but, Tina, you inspire me. You enrich me and most importantly, the love and the nourishment that you give to our beautiful baby girl. I have no words for it. <laughs> to my two-year-old baby girl, Regina Claire St. Victor. We didn't bring her tonight. There was a debate. Tina won. <laughs> As you can tell by the Biggie dance, I'm the more reckless of the two. <laughs> She is strong, she is confident, she is smart, and she is kind. <laughs> That's our morning ritual. Every day I do that with her. And some of you may not know, but I don't live in New York City any longer, I commute to New York for work. 
Um, and so I have days where I'm here, nights where I'm here, and I don't see her every day, but I always feel her presence. I feel her presence right now on this stage with me because she is my everything. She is the driving force now for everything that I do, and it's a blessing. All right, who else we got? To my Duke crew and my Georgetown crew, stand up. Duke, Georgetown. In the house. Especially Janine Conley. I'm sorry, Miss Chair of the New York Urban League Board of Directors, Janine Conley. When I graduated, when we were graduating law school, we we're law school classmates. And we're, when we were graduating law school, I was the president of the Black Law Student Association. They offered me the opportunity to address um, our, uh, our, our peer, our cohort, um, and I offered some thoughts. I said it was imperative that we make a commitment to our community that is longstanding, regardless of what we chose as our legal pursuits. Even if we went to the Wall Street firm's big law as overly paid junior associates, we had to find a way. Janine, your commitment has exceeded even the stretch of my imagination, and I'm thankful for it, and we are all thankful for it. <laughs> to my Davis Polk family and alum, where's the Davis Polk table? I cut my teeth at Davis Polk. They gave me a best-in-class training as a securities attorney, uh, which has carried with me for the 15 years that I've been practicing law. I am thankful for them for that, and I continue to benefit. They are one of my outside counsel. <laughs> so I am very thankful for Davis Polk. There are several law firms in this room that um, support me in my business that, uh, that do my work. Uh, I just want to name three. Sidley Austin, where's Sidley? Patrick Michelle? Thank you, Sidley. Strook? Is Strook in the house? And a newer firm that we've been working with more recently, which is the largest African-American-owned corporate law firm, Brian and Rubino. Where's Seth Bryant and his firm? <laughs> to my Morgan Stanley family. What's up, fam? <laughs> 11 years at the same shop. Uh, you saw the words from my chief legal officer. You saw words from Dwayne. Uh, my general counsel, Ann Cooney, is here. Cassandra Knight, Shamina Sneed, Alita Wingfield, Mike Henry, Mia Burgess, Audrey Adams. We've got a bad team on Wall Street doing crazy crazy things. We have firefighters, we've got architects, we got problem solvers, we've got soldiers. We've worked on a lot of interesting matters. Um, and it's just been quite a journey. I never thought that the practice of law could be so exciting and so strong. And I'm so thankful that I've been on this journey with you all. Thank you. To the chief diversity officers that are here, so many of you are the first responders. You're the line of defense. You're the innovations, the innovators that are coming up with the best strategies for us to try to achieve equality and level the playing field so that diverse talent can have a fair shake at success so that we can be in the boardrooms. So I applaud all of the chief diversity officers from the stalwarts like the Anna Browns and the Maya Hazels, and the Malik Jones, and the Carlos Davia Caballeros. I can't ever pronounce his name, but I love that brother. Where's Cleary? And then there's the, the new generation, right, of diverse talent. You talk about pipeline. DeAndre, DeAndre Carr is here tonight. Watch out for DeAndre. I want to briefly mention a few legends. Most of them are not here tonight but I have to say their name. Macy Russell, who actually is here tonight. Thank you, Macy, for coming in from Boston. 
Wharton Bellamy, Ben Wilson, Bill Snipes, Rhonda Joy McLean, Sheila Boston, Chris Reynolds, Dick Parsons, Vernon Jordan. Some brief, some long term. I have had the benefit of insights from the, these individuals. They have told me to be the person that others want to succeed. They have taken their insights and given me that as valuable currency to develop excellence. And I am thankful for them. To the trade associations and the nonprofits who allow me to execute on my core value of giving back, I'm thankful for them. The Council of Urban Professionals. Do we have Cup Fellows in the house? <laughs> Christina Grant is here, I see her. 2009 Cup Fellow, we've been riding hard ever since. She changed her flight to come to this. She is supposed to be in, I think this is the third state that she has been in today. Uh, but thank you for coming here to support us. Legal Outreach, my favorite not-for-profit. I've got a love story with Legal Outreach. Um, Bill McGovern, who was um, at Morgan Stanley, gave me an opportunity to, to lead our internship program years ago. And I uh, worked with Dwayne Hughes on that. I worked with Mike Henry on that. Um, and got to meet these amazing, talented young kids. And you talk about pipeline, they're hungry. They're, they're smart, but they're just hungry for the opportunity. So we do moot court mock trial. We've trained them to become the best. Um, we did, um, years ago, the executive director, James O'Neill, came to us, and he wanted uh, some seed capital to start a program for black and Hispanic boys, eighth grade boys, to go into the high school pipeline program we helped raise the capital to get that started. And then last year, the program had grown so much, we did a fundraiser, I co-chaired it, we raised half a million dollars for those boys. And what was moving for me was that 100,000 of that, those dollars came from African-American men. To Namwolf, to SIFMA, and to the New York City Bar Association. Brett, I don't know where Brett is. Hey, Brett. <laughs> Executive Director of the New York City Bar, Gabrielle Brown, is down here. Justice Richter, my co-chair on the Enhanced Diversity in the Profession Committee. I'm stepping off that committee next week, um, but I look forward to my new role as, the, uh, as a member of the New York City Bar's Executive Committee. Thank you, Brett, for that opportunity. Now, where are my brothers? Where's the group? Stand up. Members of the group, stand up, please. Where are my 1844 brothers? Stand up. Where are my Aaron's Beard brothers? Where's ISI? Where are the My Brothers Keeper brothers? And where are the members of my Charting Your Own Course family? Stand up. They say it takes a village. It doesn't happen, it doesn't happen without them. We have had powerful shared experiences with one another, helping each other redefine the meaning of fellowship so that we can support one another. And because of all those people that were just standing, I am a better attorney and probably a better father and husband. Toy Wigley is here. Uh, I met her back in 2002 when I came back to New York. I left Brooklyn when I was young, and I promised I'd come back to New York. I came back in 2002 to Harlem. I wasn't ready. I didn't know. I went down south. I didn't know. Um, Toy was a trusted advisor. She helped me navigate these streets, and I'm always thankful for her friendship. I know, Paul, I'm going to wrap it up. <laughs> to the mentors, I already named a few. You saw Dwayne on the screen. I want to name and single out one other mentor. This brother here was a former Morgan Stanley colleague. He's now a general counsel of financial services firm, and he is forever going to be my friend. Kevin Armstrong, my brother. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin was the one, they say I'm like the mayor of New York because of these relationships. Kevin was the one who pulled me aside 
I was, in, I was like in the books all the time. I'm like, as long as I have the best work product, everybody will think I'm the best. I don't need to do anything. I don't need relationships. And Kevin was the one who told me, you need to develop relationships, Nate. It is imperative if you want to succeed as an attorney that you develop relationships for your career, for your professional development, and to leverage those relationships to achieve your goals. And I'm thankful to Kevin for that. Between you, between you and Dwayne Hughes, the two of you are the primary architects to my success. And I hope that you're happy with your work product. So look around, that's my village, right? When a team looks like that, how do you lose? Finally, the last one. Y'all thankful I'm almost done, right? For those of you that have given me the greatest privilege next to being a father and a husband, for those of you that have allowed me to be your ment mentor, please stand. If I have given you advice during the course of your career, please stand. Because I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret. You have given me more than I have given you and that I can ever give you. You have given me hope. And as President Barack Obama said in 2008, during his um, primary speech, New Hampshire, he said, in the unlikely story of America, there has never been anything false about hope. I thank you all for this wonderful award. It was all a dream.